a New York best-selling author, radio host, humorist, playwright, and one of my favorite people, it is Michael Perry. That's right, Michael joins us from his home about 300 miles northwest of here in rural Wisconsin. Good morning to you, Michael. Good morning, how are you doing? We're doing well, good to see you. What's it like quarantining uh, way, way up there? Up north. Well, I mean, we're we're fortunate uh, in, in that we live at the end of a dead end road and we have a giant garden and a whole bunch of firewood. Uh, <laughs> so yesterday, yesterday, my uh, 20 year old who has been going to college in her bedroom and my 13 year old who's been going to school in the living room, uh, they celebrated quarantine by planting tomatoes in the rain. So that's how it's going. Yeah, it's about that time to start planting tomato tomato plants. I have a 20 year old who is also going to college in her bedroom, so I get it, Michael. How, how's your family doing? How are you doing with all of this? Again, I we're very fortunate. Um, it for me uh, personally, you know, about half our income comes from me performing and being on the road. So in that sense, we took a hit, but um, I've been busy writing like crazy uh, doing some book projects that I was behind on and have actually released a couple of books and so again we're just fortunate and my wife does a lot of teaching uh, yoga and strength training meditation and she's like a lot of folks has moved as much of that as she can online and again uh, our kids we have pretty bad internet here I'm just cringing wondering if I'm even coming through we call it the internet um, <laughs> but it's it's good enough that they've it's good enough that they've been able to attend their classes out here in the country. So again, I there are just so many folks uh, hit so much harder and sacrificing so much more. We've had to we've had to pay attention, um, but but we're very fortunate to be in this position. You know, you a lot of people don't know you went to nursing school. Well, you were actually working on a ranch in Wyoming. So, you know, when you said when you talk about people who are getting hard, obviously we all, often think of the frontline workers with the nurses and the doctors. Are you happy to see the accolades and, you know, kind of the attention that's been put on that career path? Of course, um, I'm, I'm terrifically happy that folks are understanding what those frontline healthcare people are, are putting themselves through. Um, I hope that that appreciation is maintained over the long term. And that's, yeah, the answer is yes. Yeah, I, I think you make a good point, though, because it's not something that's now over just because things some things are starting to open up again. We need to keep them in the forefront of, of our minds because they're on the front line. Um, a lot of people know because we've talked to you about this before. I think it was 12 years um, that you were serving right alongside your neighbors in the New Auburn Area Fire Department. W was that meaningful to you, too? So you have this nurse experience and then also being a first responder? Yes, the, the thing about that is it just taught me to never take a single breath for granted, pandemic or not. And uh, some people think that's morbid. I'm uh, not at all. I, 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 it heightens my appreciation for even the most mundane Tuesday. Uh, I feel very fortunate to be doing what I'm doing. I'm a farm kid who grew up logging and milking cows and wound up getting to write and perform and spend time in worlds that I never I never thought that people like me were allowed into. And so uh, the fire department, and even now I'm on the local service, but I hardly make any calls. I'm gone so much. But just to be in touch with that and to uh, retain a sense of mortality actually makes me appreciate each day even more. Mm. I see the New Auburn sign behind you. Molly mentioned the New Auburn area fire department. Um, what is the population now of New Auburn? Is that where you are um, or where you were? So I grew up there, then I was away for 12 years, then I was back for 12 years, and now we've been living on this farm, which is about 40 minutes from where I grew up. Um, and the last time I checked the population sign in New Auburn, it was 562, but I believe that was one <laughs> census ago. That was the last one I memorized. <laughs> yeah, there, I love that because I joke, people. my hometown and my hometown is 600 people and it's it's grown a lot since then but growing up and and i've kind of joked that i think people in small towns are a little bit better equipped for saying safer at home because i i feel like there's um there's a little bit more of that quiet already to a small town there's a quaintness and there's sort of like these little gems 
in America all around, you know, small towns. So I wondered if that if that's something you sort of resonate with. Well, I want to be careful I say this because, again, I want to acknowledge people who are struggling. And, you know, we've had changes we've had to make, but they've been pretty minor. But I just remember uh, thinking, you know, our, our we have two freezers and they're both full of venison. And <laughs> that's just, that's every year. Year. But this year it's a little more significant. So yes, I think there is something to that. We are, we are a little bit used to uh, having to plan ahead a little more. Michael, you have two new books out. Tell us about those real quick. Um, I brought out a book called Big Boys Big Rig, which I just coincidentally happen to have right here. And this <laughs> this is this was this was fun. This most of these pieces were written in the early '90s when I was first starting out. I had no idea what I was doing. I was selling books on a card table in the mall. Um, but we went back and republished a selection of those that, that p people had been asking for. And then just recently, I had a, a book called Million Billion come out. And that, that book is available anywhere. Matter of fact, I was just talking to Daniel at Boswell Books and the folks at Books and Company and Economo Walk. They can get it for you. But that is a collection. I write a column called Roughneck Grace once a week. And that's a collection of two years worth of those essays. And um, everything from... Um, Imagining what it's like to be a cat with a hangover to some real uh, pe touching pieces about being a dad. And the last piece in this book is called uh, uh, Parent mu uh, Music About Riding With My Daughters and uh, what it's like to, to discover pop music at the age of 55 when you've got young oh, kids. that's <laughs> so funny. I love it. I, my dad is going to be so bummed that you were not here in studio because you usually give me a copy of your books and he's going to be <laughs> bummed that he's not getting one of those. Yeah, it's a different time. The good news is they're available at sneezingcow.com or, as I said, independent booksellers can get a hold of them. Um, and they're available online at all your all your book outlets and as ebooks as well. You can get get it on wow. your Kindle in the next thirty seconds. Well, it was great to see you, Michael. Thank you we so much it. for joining us. And when when the time is right, come back and join us again on the Yellow Couch. I cannot wait. Mm, same with us. Thanks again. Good we to appreciate see you, Michael. it. All right, still ahead today. Um, oh, there's that website again. It's sneezingcow.com to find those awesome books.